Hello and welcome once again to Region Weather Live, your YouTube source for weather across the Dakotas and Minnesota. I'm meteorologist Brad Werner. And we're just doing a quick little update tonight because unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to increase the snow amounts across the region. And so here's that big line of thunderstorms with all this moisture now beginning to surge northward into northern parts of Minnesota where you can see the temperatures right now are in the mid to upper 30s. So eventually this is going to kind of run into that colder air, cool that off as it does so, and then transition over to snow. And as these temperatures continue to drop through the overnight hours and into Thursday morning, we're also going to be looking at the chance of some freezing rain. And so here's what the current model says. And sure enough, it's got that rain and those thunderstorms down in the southern parts of Minnesota by about this point in the evening. And as it continues to move northward, watch was it, what it does as we get to that midnight and 1 a.m. time frame, 2 a.m., here we can see that transition over to the snow and or freezing rain as we get into the northern half of the state. Now, I guess the good thing is these models are just a little bit colder at the surface than what is actually out there at this point. These the 32, 31 degree temperatures aren't that prevalent. They're not that far north and west at this point. So I think as we kind of get into the nighttime hours more so, you can see how that kind of wants to spread that freezing line just a little bit west. So ultimately, we're going to probably not have as much of this freezing rain to start off with as what the models are saying, just because it isn't quite that cold out there yet. It's probably going to be more of the rain transition over to the snow rather than the freezing rain. Now, I think as we do go into the nighttime hours, particularly along the North Shores, probably got the best chance for seeing that freezing rain and or sleet. Now, as we continue on through Thursday morning, Here's this other change that really takes place that a couple of the models really indicate is looks like it really wants to pull in more colder air down the valley and stretch that snow a little bit further south. So we're kind of extending a little bit further south that snowfall total down into, you know, more so into northeastern parts of South Dakota. We're drawing those higher amounts. We're sagging them just a little bit further southward as well. It looks like we got to increase the snow amounts as well. As you can see, boy, we've got some moderate to heavy snows occasionally throughout the day on Thursday across the North Country. So some of these driving conditions, it's going to get nasty out there. It's going to be hard to see in some of these areas as the snow is going to be coming down quite thick. Boy, there's another little batch of heavy snow that kind of wants to come off the lake and head to the north. So we're going to add some more accumulations up in the northeast, up in the Arrowhead region. And then as we get beyond midnight, that heavier band kind of rotates around. But ultimately, we're kind of seeing a slow diminish in the amount of snow through the overnight hours and by Friday morning. Here we are already 11 a.m. on Friday. You can see that snow, kind of more snow showers, light snow type of activity, but it's going to hang on, folks. It's going to hang on throughout the day on Friday. Friday's not going to be a very nice day, particularly across the eastern Dakotas and in through Minnesota, just because we're going to be dealing with those snow showers off and on throughout the day. It's not going to be until Friday night, early Saturday morning before most of that activity really moves off to the east. So for the amount of snowfall that it's expected to occur, we're looking at Upwards of 9 to 12 inches along the Canadian border up here. So if you're traveling through Pemina, Wahala, up through Roseau, man, it's you're, you could get quite a bit of snow up there. Now, otherwise, we kind of drew this line. We took this line just a little bit further south. 5 to 9 inches drawing that 5-inch mark just kind of getting close to Fargo, encompassing Bemidji and Grand Forks. A good chunk of the north, so we're going to be dealing with quite a fair amount of snow across the northern parts of our region. That three to five mark, again, kind of pulled that down into northeastern parts of South Dakota, drew it just beyond Alex and in through Duluth. You can see, like I said before, we had to draw that just a little bit further south. So some of you getting a little more snow than we anticipated, and then the trace to three a little bit beyond that, and then across the uh, North Shore here. We're looking at a little more, again, probably 5 to 9, 5 to 10 inches up across there. Amount of icing potential, we still got a little bit here in through North Dakota, but the big amount really is going to be 
kind of like I said, in that area where it looks like we're already kind of cool at this point, where we probably got the best chance for seeing some freezing rain is that uh, precipitation, that rain and thunderstorms kind of run into some of that colder air, that colder surface air right now. So just north of Duluth, including probably Duluth and along the North Shore, you've got the best chance for seeing that freezing rain take place, mainly through the overnight hours and into Thursday morning. But elsewhere, it just depends on how quickly some of this is going to cool off. I think perhaps we might be able to shave a little bit of this off in the southern edge just because it is kind of warm and the rain is just kind of running into there about now anyway. So I think maybe more of that freezing rain is going to take place a little bit further north of that line. Now, while that snow is falling for a chunk of you in through here, the winds actually aren't going to be too bad on Thursday. It's more so across the north central and especially across the northeastern parts of Minnesota, that's going to be the problem. We're going to be dealing with those strong winds of 35, 45, maybe even upwards of some 55 mile per hour wind gusts up there. Now, as we get into Thursday evening and through the overnight hours, Thursday night and Friday morning, boy, look at that. Continue just strong, strong winds up in the northeast. It's really, really going to become a problem up there through the overnight hours like still and into Friday morning. Back further west, we're going to start to see some of those winds crank up just a little bit up in the northeastern parts of North Dakota. And then as we get into Friday morning and Friday afternoon, again, those winds, those north northwesterly winds increase a little more where we're looking at 35 to maybe 45 miles per hour throughout the day on friday so what we have on the ground from thursday could be blowing around and then you add on top of that those blustery conditions where we're looking at the snow showers throughout the day on friday man friday is not looking like a great day for those of you across the across the eastern parts of north dakota northwest minnesota but notice Further off of the east were those guys who had the 40 and 50 and 60 mile per hour wind gusts as we get into Friday. It actually diminishes out there a little bit. So we're kind of trading places throughout the day on Friday. Gets a little better off in the north country up and then along the north shore. Then as we get through Friday night and Saturday morning, those winds continue to diminish. We're looking at 25, 30, maybe 35 miles per hour, but all in all, shouldn't be too bad as we go through the day on Saturday. So that's the unfortunate update. We're adding some more snowfall. We're pulling that snow line down just a little bit. We're gonna to have to deal with the winds and some snow showers throughout the day on Friday. Gonna be having some crazy winds up along the North Shore uh, through Thursday and Thursday night. So it's going to be a big mess by the time we're all said and done with all of this. So hopefully we can get through this next one and then beyond that, looks like again, we're probably going to be off. We're going to have a couple of dry days beyond that. And then next week is still kind of up in the air. We'll probably have to take a look at that as that gets closer once we kind of get a little closer to next week. But the early part of the week looks better at least. So we got some hope there. All right, everybody for Region Weather Live, I'm meteorologist Brad Warner and everybody have a good day.